the Yandere Jazz mod is easily Stardew Valley's most disturbing mod of all time. However, this mod has two components in particular that make this mod as weird as it is. These two components being Yandere and Jazz. Now, what is Yandere? Well, if you're a normal person and you don't know what it means, then according to dictionary.com, Yandere is a port, portman, portman to, a combination of two Japanese words. The first one is Yandere, which means to be sick, and the second one is dear dear, used here for love struck. A yandere is often sweet, caring, and innocent before switching into someone who displays an extreme, often violent, or psychotic level of devotion to a love interest. So that's the first part, but who is Jazz? Well, Jazz is a very young character from the video game Stardew Valley, who is roughly six years old. Yep, that's right, the someone who displays an extreme, often violent, or psychotic level of devotion to a love interest in this mod is a six-year-old girl. Yeah, this, this video is going to be a wild ride of just disturbing stuff. However, something I do have to mention before we properly get into the mod is that for obvious reasons, this mod has been deleted for a long time. And so I don't personally have access to it. However, someone that did have access to this mod was none other than Dangerously Funny himself. As back in the day, DF made a three part series of him exploring this mod. So all of the footage and information of this mod that is contained within this video has been <laughs> stolen directly from DF's video. So thank you DF for that. All three of his videos are linked in the description and you should definitely watch them after this one as they are very funny. Also, um, this video is actually sponsored by me. That's right, not NordVPN, me. Now, I don't really have a product right now. I guess the closest thing I have to it is probably my Patreon. So if you really love these videos and you want to get early access to them, or you want to get access to my random new channel that I make every month or so before the world sees it, then go and join my Patreon right now. Or actually, if you really love the background music in these videos, because, you know, I kind of like make all of it, then you can support me on Patreon with this tier instead. Anyway, yeah, enough shameless self-promotion. Let's get into Stardew Valley's most disturbing mod. Aw, she's so innocent skipping beside the tree. She's got great energy for a two-year-old. Okay, so this first event takes place in Cindersap Forest, and basically what happens is that Jazz is skipping under this big tree until you approach her, which at this point, she approaches you. And after a bit of awkward silence, she says, Um, I'm sorry, I've been really rude to you. Aunt Marnie says I shouldn't talk to strangers, so I didn't talk to you, but you seem nice. Say, what do you think of the town? And at this point you get two dialogue options. It's wonderful and I don't like it. Now if you pick the second option, well, I really have no clue what happens. My guess is that Jazz says that she will try to make the town better for you or something like that. But if you pick the first option, then Jazz says, really? I'm so happy you like it. I promise I'll try to be nice too from now on. And then the scene fades out. So yeah, the first heart event wasn't like directly weird, but it still feels a little off. Um, do you have a band-aid, Mr. Mumps? Uh, as a matter of fact, I don't, because I wasn't just watching children play from behind a bush. This scene starts off in the playground, where you are watching two kids, Vincent and Jazz, play from a distance. Yeah, totally not weird at all. But then Vincent is like, yo, Jazz, race me. And then Jazz is like, alright, bet. So they race. And Jazz gets completely smoked by Vincent. But the race isn't important at all. What is important in this cutscene is that Jazz falls over like halfway through the race and grazes her knee. So being the responsible adult that is watching random children play from a distance that you are, you go over to Jazz and help her out. Well, you can choose to ignore them, but if you do, then the cutscene just ends. So yeah, for the sake of this cutscene to go on, you must click the help her option. Anyway, you walk up to Jazz and she asks if you have a band-aid. And for some reason you do, so you place the band-aid on Jazz's knee, and after you put the band-aid on Jazz's knee, she thanks you and the cutscene ends. So yeah, we're only up to the second heart cutscene right now, and we're already watching the farmer watch children play from a distance. And then when one of the children gets hurt, the farmer magically just swoops in to help the child. So yeah, it's already pretty weird, but it gets worse. <laughs> Hmm, I don't really get it. Oh, there I am. I was just casually hiding behind the bookcase for no reason. I don't even know how to read. The cutscene starts off in the library with Jazz sitting down at a table doing her homework. Except, Jazz is really frustrated that she can't do her homework because it's too hard for her to do. So you, the farmer, magically appear from behind a bookcase to help her out. Then after Jazz says hello and states that she needs help with her homework, you get two dialogue options, and you of course have to click the first dialogue option to continue with the cutscene. So, after you've picked the first dialogue option, you sit down at the table with Jazz, and then she tells you what she needs help with. And after that, the cutscene blacks out, and when it fades back in, Jazz is happy because you 
you've helped her with her homework. And she says that she can't wait to go back home and tell Miss Penny about this. And then the cutscene just ends. So yeah, the weirdest thing about this cutscene is probably the fact that you're hiding behind a bookcase just watching Jazz until she needs help and then once again you come out and help her. Kind of similar to the second cutscene. Also, if you remember back to the start of the video when I explained the definition for Yandere, then I'm pretty sure that these first couple cutscenes are just here to build up the love interest part of Yandere, as the psychotic, extreme and violent stuff doesn't come until a little bit later in the mod. Country life is all about farming. The more children you can produce, the more money you can make. This cutscene starts off in Cindersap Forest. Now, if you're a casual Penny enjoyer, then this cutscene should seem very familiar to you, because this is actually Penny's eight-heart cutscene. Like, you know, the setting, the kids being here, and everything. However, since it's the creepy jazz mod, you know some weird stuff's about to go down here. Anyway, the cutscene begins with you walking up to Penny, who's watching the kids play by themselves. You greet each other, and then Penny tells you how she's just brought the kids here on a field trip. Jazz then sees you and runs up to greet you. Jazz then explains that she's out on a field trip and then roasts Penny for calling this a field trip, despite the fact that they're literally right next to Mahoney's ranch. You know, the place where Jazz lives. Penny is evidently disgruntled by this and changes the topic by asking you if you could be the guest speaker for today. And if you want to progress the cutscene, then you of course have to click yes. So after agreeing to be the guest speaker, Penny calls the children over and asks them if they know what a natural resource is for some reason. Both the children are eager to answer the question but Penny lets Jazz do so, and she answers with the most copy and paste dictionary meaning I've ever heard. Anyway, after this, Penny encourages Jazz for getting the answer right by rewarding her with two star points. Jazz is very pleased by this, and she happily tells you about how she's gotten at least 50 star points so far. Penny then redirects the attention of both children, but to you this time, as it's now your time to speak. And by speak, I mean you answer random multiple choice questions about the farming life. But halfway through the questionnaire, Jazz interrupts you to say, Um, farmer, if Vincent eats your veggies, will he grow up to be strong like his big brother Sam? He's so strong, I saw him lift Miss Penny clear off the ground last night when they were climbing a tree. Now, Penny is obviously quite surprised by this and angrily tells Jazz that it's not good to gossip. Jazz then says, I'm sorry, Miss Penny, I didn't know you wanted to keep it a secret. And after a bit of awkward silence, Penny says, that's enough for today, and tells the kids to go run around and play. After the kids go off and play, Penny tells you how it's a lot of work to take care of the kids, but she doesn't mind doing it as she enjoys seeing them learn. She then asks you if you'd ever want to be a parent. But before you can answer the question, Jazz comes running up and interrupts you by asking you to play with her. The cutscene then pans away, fades out, and Penny thanks you for coming on the trip with them. Okay, so there's a lot to note in this cutscene. For example, the I saw Sam lifting Miss Penny into a tree last night thing does happen in the original cutscene. However, it's Vincent that says it, not Jazz. I'm guessing Jazz just says it here to make the cutscene overall way more awkward, and also kind of give her a little bit of power in the cutscene, if that makes sense. Also, Jazz is nowhere near as attached to you in the original cutscene than she is in this one, which is really just some creepy foreshadowing for some things that will transpire in later events. Also, in the normal 8 heart cutscene, Penny asks you the would you ever want to have kids question, but in the Yandere Jazz version, so the version of the cutscene we just looked at, Jazz interrupts the two of you just as Penny's about to ask the question. Because in the real game, this is Penny's 8 heart cutscene, which is the one just before the 10 heart cutscene, which is when you kiss her. So in this cutscene, she's kind of just eyeing you up, maybe thinking about you as a candidate, but hasn't quite made up her mind yet. So Jazz being the creepy motherfucker that she is, runs up to Miss Penny in this cutscene to interrupt her while she's asking an important question to make sure that Miss Penny doesn't interfere with any of her goals. This is one of the more subtle details of the mod that I didn't pick up on at first, but the more you look into it, the worse it gets. That's like brushing a strange little girl's hair in the forest. This cutscene is pretty short, but basically what happens is that it starts off with Jazz kneeling by the main pond in Cindersap Forest. You then slowly approach her from behind. Jazz realizes that you're there and says, Oh, hi farmer, could you please brush my hair? which then presents you with two options, either brush her hair or tell her that you're busy. Now, just like usual, the non-creepy option would end the cutscene, so for the sake of continuing the cutscene, you must brush her hair. And while brushing her hair, Jazz starts speaking again. You know, I was really wrong when I first met you. I thought that you would be just like the other grown-ups. I'm so glad that you're nice instead. I hope you stay in Stodge Valley even when I grow up. Which then the game gives you two dialogue options. I plan to stay here and... 
I'll probably move away someday. Now, if you pick the I'll probably move away someday option, then I'm guessing that Juz just gets upset and tries to guilt trip you into staying. However, in the video, Dangerously Funny picks the I plan to stay here option. And after he does that, Juz says, do you, do you promise? Which then leads you to the dialogue option, I promise or I'm not sure. Now in the video, DF clicks the I'm not sure option, which you would think would lead Juz into further guilt tripping you into eventually saying yes. However, I think that the mod bugs out here because after choosing the I'm not sure option, Juz just says thank you and the cutscene fades out. Which, you know, you think that would be the response from the I promise option, but whatever. So yeah, to summarize this cutscene, you're alone with this little strange girl in the woods brushing her hair while she tells you how much she likes you and that she wishes you stay here forever. And then she even gets you to promise that you will stay here forever. Like, yeah, I just, it's just really, really weird. Um, I wanted to give you something. I don't want it. Please go away. I should put a gate up around my house. This cutscene starts off with you exiting your house at 6am, where you are immediately confronted by Jess. Yes, at 6 in the morning, Jazz is standing at your front porch. Not weird at all, but her dialogue makes it even worse. Good morning, farmer. Um, I wanted to give you something. I baked you a cake. Love heart. I didn't even ask for auntie's help. Hmm, here you go. Which after a bit of false naivety, she gives you a pink cake with a heart on top of it. But if you compare it with the normal pink cake sprite, then you'll realize that it's a lot more... red. And after Jazz forces you to take a bite, the game says, there's a weird metallic aftertaste, but other than that, it's delicious. So yeah, that's alarming, but what Jazz says next definitely confirms what you're currently thinking. Auntie always says that food tastes better if you put a little bit of yourself in it. So I did just that. And then the cutscene ends after Jazz says, I have to go now or Auntie might worry. Goodbye, farmer. So yes, not only did Jazz get up before sunrise to bake a cake for you, remember she's like six years old, and give it to you at your front door at six in the morning, but she also put her own blood into the cake. Which means, yeah, um, she self-harmed so that she could put her blood into a cake that she forced you to eat on your own doorstep. Yeah, just, yeah. Keep in mind, this is only the sixth heart cutscene, so there's still four more really creepy cutscenes to go over. And of course, it only gets worse from here on out. Oh, she was in my house. That's nothing out of the ordinary, yeah, as I run away and hide. Good idea. She'll never see me right here. The bin even opens by itself. The last cutscene started off at 6am at the front of your house, but this cutscene starts off at, um, something p.m. again at the front of your house. But yeah, basically what happens is that you're entering your farm at night, but just as you get to your letterbox, Jazz exits your house, which, you know, of course alarms you, so you scurry away and hide behind your shipping bin. Jazz then says, I wonder when Farmer will come home. It's gotten so late too. Which at this point, she just shits on Aunt Money for not giving a crap about her and then exits the farm. She also steals something from your home and confesses her crimes in the most creepy way possible. And then the cutscene fades out, but it's not done yet. After Jazz goes away, you check your house. Your bed covers are in disarray and your toothbrush is missing. Maybe Jazz isn't the shy little girl that you thought she was. Like, yeah, considering she cooked me a blood cake and forced me to eat it at 6am in the morning on my front doorstep. I like, no shit, like, no shit she's not the shy little girl you thought she was. When, when did you ever think that? Do you remember when I took the kids on that field trip? I do. That was four days ago. The prerequisite to this heart event actually starts when you get a letter in the mail from Penny that says, Dear Farmer, Gunther has asked me to help him organize a new shipment of books, but working by myself would take a lot of time. Could you please come to the museum around 2pm to help me? Penny. So yeah, after receiving the letter, you must go to the museum at 2pm to trigger the heart event. The heart event starts off with you walking up to the museum, and as soon as you're about to enter, Jazz then runs up to you, walks behind you, and says, Hello, farmer, which makes you jump as you didn't realize that she's behind you. After saying, Oh, sorry, did I scare you? Jazz then asks you what you're doing here. You of course say, helping Penny, cause like, you know, that's why you came here in the first place, because of the letter that Penny sent you. After some silence, Jazz says, okay, and then asks you to come play with her later. Also, uh, this is a side note, but something alarming about this is that at this point in the heart cutscenes, you only have the option to say yes to her questions, which is a bit weird. 
Now, after you tell Jazz, yes, I will play with you, but it will take a while to finish helping Penny, Jazz says, don't worry, I'll wait, and then assumes her position at the front of the museum, again, like a fucking statue, waiting for you to finish on, I mean, finish helping Miss Penny. So anyway, you go into the library to help Penny. After greeting you and asking you to follow her to the books to help her, she asks you a question. Do you remember when I took the kids on a field trip? Well, that time, I was going to ask you a question. Would you ever want to be a parent, Farmer? Now, your response to this doesn't really matter that much. However, if you remembered back to Jazz's fourth heart event, then you remember that Penny was actually supposed to ask this question back then, but she couldn't because she was interrupted by Jazz. And the reason why Jazz did this originally is because she doesn't want you to be close with Penny and instead get close with her, but you'll see more of that later in the video. Anyway, a few hours go by, Penny thanks you for helping her, and you walk out of the library, just to be greeted by Jazz, because remember, you did promise to play with her after all, but it's late, so you tell her that she should go back to Marnie soon. Jazz isn't very happy with this, but you tell her that you'll walk her back to her house, and she is suddenly very happy with that. Jazz then says, hmm, let's play together another day. Promise? And your only option is to promise to the overly creepy stalker girl that you will. So yeah, this cutscene's very weird, but of course, the worst is still yet to come. You see, I just love farms, and she winks. Excellent, I'd love to show you my lightning rod. Jazz's ninth heart cutscene starts off with you opening your door at like 6 in the morning again, and although she is in frame, Jazz isn't the one who greets you this time. In fact, it's actually a new NPC called Luna, who reveals to you that she heard about you in the Stardew Valley Tribune magazine, and so she just had to come over here. You see, I just love farms, winky face, and I also love all the animals. Yes, I absolutely love the animals. But since I'm new to the area, do you think you could show me around the town? So yes, this random lady called Luna just randomly rocks up on your door one day and immediately wants to fuck, which like that in itself is kind of weird, but it gets worse. Because you know how I just said that Jazz was standing just in frame? Well, as soon as Luna stops talking, Jazz runs up to Luna and barges into the conversation, introducing herself. Good morning, miss. I'm sorry, but Mr. Mumps already promised to play with me today. Isn't that right? To which you only get one dialogue option. Yes, you're right. And so, Jazz continues her creepy conversation with, See, I'm really sorry, but he just can't come with you today. Luna tries to save the conversation by saying, Oh, but I'm sure that- But Jazz cuts her off by simply saying, Shut up already. <laughs> kind of a girl boss move, I'm not gonna lie. Obviously though, a random little girl running up out of nowhere just to cock block her annoys Luna quite a bit. And so, she starts to threaten Jazz. However, once again, Jazz has already got a hold of this situation. Surely you wouldn't hit such a defenseless little girl in front of Mr. Mumps. Run along now. <laughs> and after being bitched by a six-year-old girl, Luna growls at Jazz and subsequently runs off. Jazz then once again prompts you with another question. She was really annoying, wasn't she? With the only option available now being, yeah, thanks for the help. However, the cutscene doesn't end here. After Jazz exclaims how happy she is that you praised her, she tells you not to worry about Luna anymore as I'll take care of her for you. However, the manner in how she will do so is of course kept a mystery to you. A mystery that is revealed in the second part of this cutscene. This cutscene once again starts off at um, what I'm presuming is the crack of dawn at the front of your house. But this time, Jazz has a present for you. Yesterday, the lady in the cart showed up and um... I found this, and I thought you'd like it. Jazz hands you a brown doll. It has a weird texture. What material is this? The color reminds you of something. By the way, did you hear about the missing lady? It seems they still haven't found her. Oh well, at least she won't be bothering you anymore, right? Jazz then says that she has to go and runs off back home. And then the cutscene just ends. So yes, exactly everything that you just thought happened, happened. Jazz killed Luna and used her flesh to make her into a human doll that she just randomly gives to you once again at your front doorstep. Also, yes, the doll that she gives you during the cutscene is actually an item that goes into your inventory, and yes, it looks exactly as messed up as you would think it would. This event starts off with you receiving a letter in the mail that reads, Meet me in the bathhouse after dark. Penny. Now, yes, this is actually Penny that sent the letter, as usually what happens in the base game is that Penny invites you to the bathhouse for her 10th heart cutscene, she confesses her feelings towards you, she kisses you, and you both live happily ever after the end. 
Or you pick the sorry, but I don't like you in that way dialogue option and Penny starts crying in front of you. So yes, that is Penny's 10 heart cutscene in the normal version of the game. However, since this is the weird jazz mod, yeah, things turn quite sour. So yeah, you receive the letter and you meet Penny in the bathhouse after dark and the cutscene proceeds as normal. You make some small talk, Penny confesses her feelings and leans in for the kiss. However, just as she does that, Jazz comes from out of nowhere and interrupts the two of you. What are you two doing? J Jazz? Penny responds, what are you doing here? But Jazz dodges the question and instead re-asks her own. Miss Penny, just what are you trying to do? Are you sure that it's a good idea to say such embarrassing things to Dumby? Penny tries to retort by saying, what are you talking about? But her sentence is cut short as Jazz quickly drags her head underwater. Maybe you need to cool your head a little before making such a rash decision. And then Jazz proceeds to creepily taunt Penny while she's drowning. Come on, Miss Penny, stop struggling. You're making this worse than it needs to be. It'll all be over soon. But then the game stops and prompts you with only one dialogue option. Stop! <laughs> so yes, unfortunately, there's no option to just let Penny drown. Anyway, after yelling at Jazz to stop drowning Penny, Jazz becomes very confused and lets Penny go. What is it, Dumby? Did I do something wrong? With the only dialogue option once again being, yes, you can't just attack people like that. But Jazz still doesn't get it. But if I didn't do that, you might have started to get along with Miss Penny, and you would fall in love with her. And we can't have that happen. And you promised to always be with me, remember? Remember? You promised. Which technically we didn't promise that, because uh, DF clicked the I'm not sure option back in the fifth heart event, but whatever. The creepy discontinued mod is broken. What, what, a, what a surprise. Anyway, as she's saying this, Jazz gets increasingly close to you and starts hugging you. Jazz then asks if you hate her, and the only option that you can respond with is no. Which kind of sucks, like this mod would be a lot better if you got to actually choose your dialogue options half the time, but whatever. I guess in a way, the lack of choice does add to the creepiness, as it suggests that while you're around Jazz, you're not even in your right mind. It's like she has some kind of spell over you or something. But getting back to the gutscene, Jazz then asks if you hate Miss Penny, and you have to say, yes, I hate her. To which Jazz responds with, I hate her too. I hate her so much. She wanted to steal you away from me. But I won't let her do that. If she tries again, I'll bury her like I did with that other lady. Which that line of dialogue right there confirms that she killed Luna in the other cutscene, but like, yeah, we already kind of figured that out. Jazz then asks if you promise to always stay with her, and this time, the game only gives you one dialogue option. I promise. Jazz then says, forever and ever, and the cutscene fades out, and it tells you that Penny ran away and that she's never coming back to you. Jazz then keeps hugging you for a while, and after a few minutes, you remind her that it's late. Jazz then asks you to walk her home, before giving one last psychotic rant. I know I'm selfish, but I just can't stand the idea of you being with someone other than me. I became paranoid, but now you promised, and I know you will never break your promise. We'll always be together. And with that, the final cutscene of the Yandere Jazz mod has finished. So yes, we just both saw the exact same cutscene, so I don't think I need to summarize it or explain the implications of it. Overall, this mod is just pretty fucking weird. And honestly, whoever made it, deserves jail time. Like, as long as the author of this mod is still alive, then I don't feel as though that's safe to bring kids into this world. But hey, I mean, it could have been a lot worse. Like, there could have been actual illegal, like, material in this mod, so... Yeah. I mean, like, besides the murder, like, that's... Just... And speaking of worse stuff, I'm pretty sure that this mod allows you to marry Jazz. Which, uh, yeah, marry, marry the six-year-old, yep, that... Yep, of course, of course it does. So, yeah. I guess that the moral of the story is that you should join my Patreon so that you can access my videos way before I release them, and also exclusive content too. Okay, yeah, that was that was pretty shameless. I'm not gonna lie. Just that is the end of video.